Whatever we do today, and wherever we go, oil will play a major part. It helps make our clothes, decorate our homes, and it fuels the cars, buses and planes that take us from here to there. Whenever we fill up at the pump, remember, it's oil truck drivers working in one of the world's most dangerous professions that keep the country on the move. But today, as oil companies push for even higher profits, health and safety standards are being compromised. Well, I've been in the job now 25 years, driving petrol tankers for 18 years. In the oil tanker industry, Unite is the biggest union and there's about 2,700 oil tanker drivers. We go through extensive training. We're constantly monitored by our companies and our health and safety teams and our trainers. Driving on the public highway nowadays, they're not getting any quieter. There's more and more vehicles. Everybody seems to be in a rush. Just driving in general is a very dangerous job on its own. When you pass in a petrol tanker driver on, on a motorway with your children in the car, you'd like to think that the, the, the driver in charge of that vehicle is trained, is fully competent at what he does, and that in the event of a, an incident, he knows exactly how to handle it, and you can feel comfortable in the knowledge that we have a petrol tanker industry that is geared to safety and high standards. Not so long ago, getting oil from the ground to the petrol pump and into our cars was relatively straightforward. The oil companies handled everything. Drilling, refining, distributing, and then selling it to us on the garage forecourt. But these days, seeking greater profits, they've pulled out of the distribution and retail end of the market. So where once we bought our fuel from BP, Texaco, or Shell, today we buy it from the supermarket. Distribution is now handled by contractors, all competing on price as the oil companies squeeze even higher margins from the process. But as margins are squeezed, training, working conditions and health and safety are taking a dangerous back seat. This is an area where the drivers have to know what they're doing. They have to be well qualified. You can't afford to let just anybody do that kind of work. They used to be very conscientious of who they used. It was large blue-chipped companies with proven health, safety and training records that were brought into the sector to distribute their petroleum products. They no longer seem to be as conscientious because there's cost savings out there. We're seeing uh, colleagues made redundant throughout the whole sector and then two, three months later you've got a contractor popping up out of nowhere delivering products on half the rates of pay that the mainline drivers are on. This squeeze has other effects too. Drivers are now spending longer on the road, further raising the risk of accidents. The contracting process has created a beat-the-clock culture. Drivers are pushed to go faster and cut corners when delivering and offloading fuel. This is putting the drivers and public at risk. Wages are also being eroded and pensions shifted from final salary to defined benefit contributions. This is not about our pay. This is about having a safe, trained, environment, experienced workforce driving these vehicles. Oil companies and those they award the contracts to for distributing oil and fuel have a duty to maintain the safety levels of their operations, especially given the profits being earned. I think the key problem is that standards should be bettered and, and not made worse. They certainly should be on a par with countries like the Netherlands and Germany, where the training is much more comprehensive, where drivers learn um, to be able to diagnose problems, a certain amount about vehicle maintenance, legislation, all these aspects which are covered to an extent here, but they need to be bettered. If this decline in safety standards is allowed to continue, it will be too late for talking. We will be faced with major fatalities of drivers and members of the public. An example of that would be uh, the, the Bunsfield oil storage uh, terminal, where there was a, a release of vapour from a, a storage tank which uh, ignited, there was a series of explosions. The whole area had to be evacuated and um, it caused absolute pandemonium. We cannot wait while oil companies, distributors, retailers and politicians drag their heels. It's time for positive action. Unite the Union is pushing for an industry-wide forum. We believe minimum standards must be established across the board and that competition should be based not on price, but on reliability, safety and service delivery. We've written to the oil companies, we've written to the retailers. We want a passport control where it's monitored by the government. We would like 
the end to a petrol tanker driver having seven or eight different pensions. What we want is a negotiated settlement. If you want to make sure that our roads, garage forecourts and communities are protected, then you can help. The general public can do a great deal to support the campaign, to shout about the situation, to make politicians and other people aware of the dangers that we all face and the worries we all have. Tanker drivers off this country, we've got our backs to the wall, nowhere to turn, and the message is quite simple and quite clear, enough's enough. Support our campaign at unitetheunion.org slash enough is enough and help establish the standards needed to ensure oil truck drivers can continue to keep the country moving in the safest possible way.